Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, depending on where you are. Um, hope you had a great event so far. Um, for me, it's good morning, actually. I'm from Europe, so uh, it's almost eight o'clock now. Um, so my session will be about enterprise Power BI deployments with Azure DevOps. Uh, the interesting thing is I more or less refactored the session a little bit with the uh, a new functionality that Power BI offers natively, which is deployment pipelines. So you will see a bit of deployment pipelines as well. Um, having that said, um, please do not forget to donate. Uh, this event is all related to charity, so uh, uh, please do so. Probably you've seen this screen a few times before already in other sessions, um, but I definitely recommend you to do so. Um, and also I want to, uh, would like to thank our sponsors because without them, it wouldn't be possible to host this event. So that's another interesting thing and important thing to mention. Uh, all these companies are supporting this event uh, to, to make it possible and to host us here at this moment. Um, so thanks to all of them. Um, short introduction about myself. My name is Mark. I'm working as a data and AI consultant in Macau, uh, it, which is a Dutch company. Um, Next to that, I'm also awarded as a data platform uh, most valuable professional, uh, which I'm now for the second year. So I'm uh, uh, happy to be renewed uh, on July 1st. Um, my expertise is in particular in Power BI. And the interesting thing is what I always tell, I started working with Power BI when Power BI turned from green to yellow. So that's uh, around 2015. Um, that's at the same time that my career started and I directly uh, started working with Power BI and my career involved in the same pace as that uh, Microsoft did. So I've seen all of, the, all of it, uh, not many surprises left, honestly. Um, and that's also where the, kind of the thing came from that I work with Power BI. I like to drink a beer every now and then. So joke was made easily, Power Beer. Uh, and that's what you see a lot of for me online as well. Um, um, so follow me on LinkedIn, Twitter, find my blogs on my website, uh, or if you have any queries, uh, feel free to reach out on any of these channels. Um, having that said, enough about me, let's dive a bit deeper in this topic. Um, what we will cover today, uh, first is our way of working. We also have a quick look at our way of working and how this whole approach fits in. Um, second, the evolution of BI. How does this relate to what we did in the past and what we do nowadays uh, in working with BI, business intelligence? We will have a look at a deployment framework. How can you uh, work with such an approach in an easy to, to understand framework? Of course, a bunch of demos because I like to take a risk every now and then. Um, what about data flows? How does data flows in combination to other uh, components relate to this, this framework and this way of working. As already announced, the comparison between Azure DevOps and uh, Power BI deployment pipelines. Uh, and we will have a quick stop at XMLA endpoints and the roadmap. Where is Microsoft going to in relation to, to this deployment pipelines thing and to relate in relation to Azure DevOps integration possibilities? Maybe, we don't know yet. Um, but more about that later. Um, so let's get started. First, uh, our way of working. Um, so let's have a quick look at what we used to do in the past and what we are doing now with this. We all live in a busy area. We, we have a lot of things to do. Uh, people are asking qu our, uh, questions all day. All day. Um, we have a lot of work on our plate. It all requires our attention. And with that, we quickly made a mistake simply because uh, we already start thinking about the next thing to do before we even finish the first thing. Um, so where we in the past working in a classic approach, which was more a waterfall uh, method by gathering requirements, getting the data uh, available for your reporting, explore the data, cleaning, modeling it, reporting, and then we're probably past two years uh, and maybe the insights are already useless because it took too long before that we actually delivered them. Since we're so busy nowadays, uh, it is very likely that we started working in an agile way of working. Um, most of the companies that today already transformed to an agile way of working, um, where we work in uh, smaller iterations and quick, quick deliverables, um, where actually we need to fit our uh, BI work in as well. Um, 
So, for example, we can we make quick deliverables in maybe a month, maybe even less than a month um, in sprints. And once we deliver that, we already start thinking about the next sprint and the next iteration where we get our requirements so we can quickly align with our end users to deliver this. As I said, it is very likely that we make a mistake. So how does this all relate to your uh, Azure DevOps and your way of working? Actually, pretty simple. We work with multiple people on the same project, and we have to make sure that we work, we're working on the same thing and that it nicely integrates and think about continuous integration and continuous delivery. With an agile way of working, we want to continuously deliver the latest artifacts to our uh, end users. Um, and continuous integration, once my colleague is done with his uh, finished his work, uh, we directly want to integrate it in a central repository so we all can benefit from his work. Um, two things that are really important to, to work with and to have a look at nowadays. Um, we can achieve that by, for example, working with Azure DevOps as a repository, as a code repository, but also for artifacts like Power BI. I'll show you that in a second. If we have a look at the evolution of BI, um, we can define three layers where in the past we were working, uh, or, or what we call the first wave of BI was mainly corporate BI. It was pushed from IT to end user. They pushed the, the, um, the reports, the, the deliverables, which was really uh, um, yeah, IT to end user and a typical example of a classic approach that took long before they actually delivered something um, after you request the things and it is not that flexible. The second wave of BI is analyst to end user. So more people in your organization started working with uh, uh, BI tooling such as, for example, Power BI or uh, maybe reporting services. Um, this is also where Power BI is already a bit positioned in the second wave. But Power BI is especially positioned in the third wave of BI, which is BI for everyone. It doesn't matter who you are or what your role is in the organization. Everyone within your organization should be capable to do their own data analysis with Power BI. Having that said, it is also interesting to look at what kind of things are created in your organization and uh, how are they doing, for example, versioning. How do they make sure that they represent the right numbers? Um, all that is coming to this continuous integration and continuous delivery story, because artifacts will be delivered from different departments in your organization that should seamlessly integrate to come together to one solution. If you look at self service BI first, and user BI has already said, it is interesting to have a look at what are we actually representing here? Who's delivering this? So there are also some risks related to end user BI and self-service BI. We should take this into account uh, when we deliver something, but that's not a little bit off topic for the uh, Azure DevOps approach. Let's have a look at what deployment scenarios we can think about when we uh, uh, define these three layers, corporate BI, which is IT to end user, IT, and self, uh, IT managed and self-service BI, which is like the, the middle flavor and um, there is some involvement from IT but in the end I self-service you can build your reports and dashboards on top and last but not least the business led a self-service BI. If we have a look at the approach the corporate BI is really top down. It, the results and the reports are pushed from IT down to the end user of the report. Um, the middle flavor is a blended approach, so it can be that IT is, for example, delivering gateway to be used or uh, some of the, the artifacts that are used in a centralized solution. Um, and in the end, self-service BI is bottom up. So the insights and the, the needs for insights is coming from the uh, uh, end user and pushed up to management and higher level management. We look at what data sources you can use. Corporate BI is typical and published by IT source. Think about your uh, our booking systems or um, HR data, stuff like that. Um, the blended approach uses uh, go governed sources. So this can be IT related sources that are made available for other users in the organization via gateway or maybe managed data sets or managed uh, uh, data flows. Um, and for self-service, it can be any type of source. It can be your local Excel file. It can be, um, for example, your own mailbox that you start analyzing to uh, 
um, to see what's the most work related to that you do in, uh, during a day. The ownership of the sources is again split from fully IT supported um, to the businesses in, uh, involved in every uh, scenario. Um, where in the Blender approach, IT can be responsible for the data model, but the business is responsible for their own reports and so on. Uh, governance again, a similar split from IT all the way to business and in the middle, uh, a blended approach. The usage of scope is, if we look at corporate BI, the end user, the, the business user is only uh, consuming the results that are pushed to him. Where um, um, in the blended approach, they only create the reports and dashboards on top. And in the self-service, they do everything. They're responsible for everything, uh, they, all the way from data preparation, modeling, reporting, and dashboard. If we should give this uh, scenario's name, I will say the left one corporate BI is 100% IT driven. And on the right side, we have a self service, which is 100% business driven. And in the middle, we have the 50 50 split. That all comes together to a deployment framework. And there should be uh, uh, some kind of framework, some kind of guidance, how we work with these approaches and how this relates to the Power BI ecosystem. So let, let's have a look at that. If we have a look at a deployment scenario, we can typically look at uh, us as a Power BI developer. We are on the, uh, on the left bottom. Sorry about that. There you go. Um, on the left bottom, um, we're here and we commit uh, uh, our files, our PBIX files or artifacts to an Azure repository. I will demo this in a second as well, but at first we'll explain what, the, what it will look like. Um, once it is in this repository, we have continuous integration where the, co the content that we publish in the repository will be automatically pushed to the Power BI development workspace. So in the Power BI server, we have defined different stages, which is development, uh, UAT or acceptance uh, and production. Um, so all our artifacts will be after upload automatically pushed to development. This is the continuous integration. Um, after an approval stop, or maybe after we click the button, it doesn't necessarily have to be an approval. Uh, there's again continuous integration where all these artifacts from the development workspace um, will be moved to the acceptance or UAT workspace. Um, so this captures the master artifacts that will be pushed to uh, uh, the UAT workspace and includes the same content as that we already had here in development. Um, here again, the master artifact is saved with a versioning on top. And once we approve it, and approving can be an interesting step here to look at. For example, you want your end user to approve after the user acceptance testing uh, before you move to production. So you can uh, let others approve before you move to production. It gets the same artifact and pushes this to production. And only for your production workspace, you publish on Power BI app to share with your end users. Uh, possibly, if you like to, you can also share the data set in here for analysts to reuse your data set for different scenarios. Um, this is the entire scope of what we will do in uh, Azure DevOps. All this is automated in Azure DevOps by using PowerShell, uh, which is Power BI account lets, as well as the Power BI REST API. Um, so this comes together with Azure DevOps. The repositories are the main thing where we upload our content, Power BI services where we push it to, and this connects with the Power BI REST API. Before we dive into the demos, I quickly want to show you what the context is, what we will demo. I've set up three repositories in, uh, in Azure, uh, which all contain a similar setup. Uh, in development, we have a resource group that contains a SQL Server, SQL database, and an analysis service model and a similar approach for acceptance and for production. The interesting thing here is that we use a different data set uh, or a different uh, uh, number of rows and different amount of data in each model in each, in each environment. During the demo, I will uh, fo follow the approach as I just explained to you, where we first publish a version to um, a development workspace. Uh, which has uh, it creates a workspace which has two workspace users and um, publish the data set in a report and after an approval step we move this content the same artifact to acceptance 
And as last step, we can move that same content to production. So as I said, uh, life's boring without risk. So let's have a look at the demos. Um, and let's move to uh, Azure DevOps. For the ones that, uh, of you that are not familiar with this yet, this is Azure DevOps where you can define projects. And in each project, um, you can have different components. In my example, I'm using a repository. Uh, this is a typical environment where you can save your files. Um, and as I will show you here, uh, I have a, created a folder which includes sample files. And this includes two PBIX files. One PBIX file is the top one, so the one that we will use is demo underscore dp.pbix. Um, that's uploaded already a while ago. Um, but as soon as we upload a new version here, so let's quickly do that. I will just download it and upload the same artifact again. Uh, let me quickly. As soon as I've uploaded this file, what I can easily do like this, um, I can give a comment to it like, hey, I up just uploaded a new version and I want to merge it into the master branch. Or if I'm in the development phase, I can merge it into a different branch. In this case, it's only uh, 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 131 uh, kilobytes. I just upload it directly to the master branch, uh, which you shouldn't do normally. And if you want to, you can even link it to existing uh, items in your board. So that can be your scrum board or whatever. Uh, if I commit it, it will be uploaded. And in a second, we will see that this date will be updated as well. So let's just refresh the browser for a sec. Or maybe it just captures the date that was last edited. It doesn't really matter. Uh, what I want to show you is once we upload a file here, uh, the pipeline directly starts running. This includes, oh here it is all actually running, um, started on the 15th of July, just a few minutes, uh, about a minute ago. Um, this pipeline is configured to automatically run and create, in this case, artifact number 48. Um, what does this tell you? This artifact includes all the files um, that are uh, captured in the repository. It packages them together, um, and in this case, you see that it copies the files and publishes an artifact. Um, but it packages together and all these artifacts. We work pipelines. And if we have a look here at runs, for example, we can also have a look at the previous runs. Just now we completed uh, uh, the run number 48. And here we had deleted a file which was run number 47. And we uploaded another file which was run 46. Um, what we will see here on this area. Um, so this is directly our versioning. Once we mess up somewhere, we can easily roll back to one of the previous versions. I will show you in a second how to do that. As the next page, we have the releases. And releases is where we actually start publishing the content. As you see, there is one running at this moment. This is the continuous integration that I just showed you in one of the slides, um, which is this one. We just uploaded the new files with the repository, which automatically triggers the continuous integration to our development workspace. Just so we're following this path at this moment. This is automatically triggered. It's only development, so we can directly publish it. What's happening here on the back is that these release pipelines are configured based on variables. And let me show you these variables. Once I click edit and I go to variables, uh, I can define different items. And what you'll see here is uh, I define three stages, which is development, acceptance, and production, uh, as you can see here. I'll show them in a sec. Um, I've got an, uh, 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 service principle that I'm using uh, and a username uh, configured that is publishing the content. Of course, it should be a service, uh, service account or whatever and not a named user for this demo. I'm just using my name. Um, and we have a, a prefix group name and this prefix is representing the name of the workspace in a second. Um, these are all related to what we are going to publish. Uh, I already opened Power BI and let's have a look if this release is already finished. 
yep, as you can see, the development one is now finished. Uh, and what you'll see here is that this published artifact number 48. Last time I released it, it was 45, and the one before it was 47. This represents the version that we just published. If I create a new release, for example, I can here select the version I want to publish. So maybe I messed up in version 48. I can easily roll back to version 47 and create a new release. Um, so let's have a look what this actually does. Once I open this pipeline, we see the same three stages, development, acceptance, and production. Um, where development is now succeeded, and here it asks for an approval before we move on to, uh, to acceptance. But first, have a look at what it actually did. So once we go to Power BI, and let me refresh the browser for a sec. If we have a look at the workspaces, I just saw the prefix, and there we go. Uh, it created automatically a workspace light up underscore dev, underscore development. Of course, you can configure this in the way you want it. You can do it as a prefix, suffix, whatever you want. As you can see, we published the file the demo underscore dp at, with a data set and a report. And once I open that, I get a actually empty uh, report. But let's have a look at the metadata because I'm also reading the metadata from the database. I'm now connected to the database, which is O, which stands for development uh, ontwikkeling in Dutch. Um, in the uh, demo underscore o underscore dp research group. I explained to you the context of this demo uh, a few minutes ago that I'm also uh, having different research groups in different environments. So what we will do next is trigger the release to run for acceptance. If I approve this step, you can see that you can define different people to approve this step. Here you see my name, so I can approve my own work, which is a bit weird, but for a demo purpose, very useful. Uh, or my colleague Ton or Dave can uh, approve this. So here I can just say, yes, it's fine. I can add a comment, it's not required, but you can make it required as an owner of this pipeline. Uh, and there's a timeout configured for 30 days. So after 30 days, this item will expire and will not be relevant. Another thing that you can um, uh, configure. Also, you can see the logs to see what is actually changed, what is changed on the backend. And now I'm approving. Um, here I defined that only one approver should be sufficient. You can even define if you want all three people to, three people to approve before you can actually uh, uh, continue uh, up to your process, how it best fits in. The job is running at this moment, and this is using Azure Runtime to spin up the jobs and execute the scripts on the backend. So as you can see here is that we are, uh, opened the logging now and it just started to build artifacts and started to run build 48. Um, reading from our environment, and you see here that it uh, reads the sample file and then the demo DP PBIX file. So this is what is actually running and what it's uh, incorporating for this release. Um, here we see the starting of the script and it checks if the group, so the workspace already exists. Access. Uh, we see here light up underscore ACC, which is acceptance. It's checking if it already exists and the answer is probably no because here it started creating the workspace. Um, it also adds my user as an admin. Uh, since this script is now running on my account, it, I was already an admin. Um, so this is configuring the group, the Power BI workspace, and after that, we will start publishing the Power BI report. So here you see uh, finishing Power BI report created in the workspace light up underscore ACC. Um, so we also published the file already. And last but not least, it uh, uh, gives an update data source. And that is the interesting thing, because if we have a look here, we developed our PBIX file and upload our PBIX file based on the development environment. So based on um, the development, uh, um, how to say the development uh, uh, resource group. Once we move the same file to acceptance, we automatically want to change the parameter values on the back. And that is what we already configured as well in the pipeline. Um, because we changed this parameter value, we're automatically moving to acceptance and uh, or UAT. And with that, we are also changing the connection of the data sets to start reading the data 
from another resource group in Azure with another database and another analysis services model. So here you see that it uh, uh, changed the, con the connection and it dumps uh, a, a file actually with some logging, which is what you see here, lightup underscore ac.txt, which is just all this together, all this logging together in one file dumped for future reference. Um, release 83 is now finished for acceptance, so let's have a look. And you can see that it's pending for approval already for production. So let's have a look in Power BI again if it already created this workspace as it should be uh, according to the logging. And if it also, yep, there we go. A light up ACC uh, where we previously only had the dev version. So we created a new workspace. We have new content in here, which is again the same Power BI file, but then the connection is changed on the back. So if we look at this same report right now, we do have some data in here. We, uh, it's still limited, it's acceptance, um, but we do have some data. And finally here, we see that's connected to a different environment. So we are moving the same content across the environment from workspace to workspace, um, while we are not changing uh, anything in the PBI file, we're just swapping a parameter value on the back. That is what it's actually doing. Um, so now we're in the second stage, which is acceptance, and let's move back to uh, Azure DevOps, and we can do a similar approach for production. Um, I will tell you already, this one will be failing, and I will show you in a sec why. While this is running, I just uh, approved for this step, and yep, there we go. It's cute, and it will run in a second. Um, as said, if you want to do an easy rollback while this one is running, I will show you the result in a bit. Uh, we can create a new release, for example, uh, where, as I said, you can define different version. So maybe I want to roll back to version 45. I can do a rollback. I can trigger these two at the same time, as long as I'm not triggering two times the development or two times acceptance at the same time. So release 84, it already started to roll back to Artifact 45 for development. So these are both running at the same time now. It has been queued, so once this is finished, it will start this one most likely. It is already finished for 83, so let's have a look. I already told you this will most likely be failing. The reason why is that the configuration on the back end is not sufficient to uh, point to the right. Um, uh, it did create a workspace. It did add me as a user, um, but it cannot find the analysis services model. Simply because the analysis service model is not spinned up. So there is no need, there is no requirement to have your analysis service models running um to during deployment so you can further automate these tasks uh, by for example uh, for cost savings not bring your analysis service models during deployment but only spin them up during business hours that is also something you can do so this entire pipeline can still run without the need for uh, uh, to, to have the uh, models running in analysis services this same approach applies even if you're not having another service models, but just a PBIX file where your model is built in Power BI desktop itself. So that doesn't really matter in the end, it's both possible. Maybe you have missed one of these steps. I've written a blog on my website, data-mark.com, um, about versioning and CI/CD with Power Azure DevOps for Power BI. Uh, this blog describes from end to end what steps you can take uh, to reach these goals. And best of all, all these components that we use to configure the, uh, 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 the Power BI workspaces uh, and publish reprint updates parameters are available in um, the Azure DevOps marketplace where you can download them yourself and configure your own pipeline. These artifacts uh, include three different actions which is creating or updating a workspace, creating or updating a report, and updating a parameter value. The links for this are also on my website in the same blog post, um, and you can start using this today yourself. But what about data flows? Now we only worked with, um, um, with a PBIX file, which only is your data model, 
so your data set, your report, and your dashboard. We didn't think about data flows yet. For those of you who are not familiar with a data flow, a data flow is an entity or a, an increment of your data set, just a table, maybe multiple tables, that you save in the Power BI service and in a centralized position. So this can be used in different data sets. For example, I want to have my customer dimension for my sales model centralized as a data flow because I know that I'm using this um, customer model not only for my sales model, but also for my CRM analysis or whatever. A data flow centralized one of these tables in what's called an entity and can be used in different data sets and it only exists in a Power BI service. Uh, but it can also have linked or computed entities which are uh, referring, uh, referring uh, data flows to another data flow, which is, by the way, a premium only feature. Um, data flows itself is not premium only, that can be used for everyone. Um, what about data flows? How does that relate to this entire process? Um, before I'm going to point you to my blog, because I also wrote a blog about that, how to move data flows using the Power BI REST API, I will quickly show you what actually a data flow is. So let's move back to the Power BI service. And here we go. In the Power BI service. Um, I believe that I still have one here. Yep. In one of my other workspaces here, I have a data flow configured. Uh, the refresh field, but it doesn't really matter. So let's go back through the lineage view for a second. Uh, sorry, to list view. Um, I do have a data flow here. And once I click this button, I can export a JSON of a data flow. And that is pretty interesting to see what a data flow actually is. The steps what I'm now doing is something you can also automate. And that is what we will do in a sec. Um, because let me show you quickly. Open it in Notepad. There we go. Um, this JSON is the definition of my uh, data flow, and let me show it as a uh, format it as a JSON. What we see here is that the modified date timestamp, we see a, a few settings and we see the dimensions here or the entities here. I have two tables in this data flow, which is one is car and the other one is sample data. These two dimensions uh, have the same name, most likely they have an ID. And here we find the entire Power Query code. So the source is SQL database, connects to the same database that you just used for the deployment. Um, it connects to a schema and everything is in here. So this is our data flow, uh, or at least the Power Query definition. Another thing that you will find a little bit more to the bottom are the different attributes that are defined, which is the, what columns are in there and uh, what type they are. Is it a string, is it the text, is it an integer, for example, is the date. All this information is captured in this JSON model, and here you will find the partitions. So it has a full refresh pol uh, policy partition. So every time I hit a refresh button, it will refresh the entire data flow, not only a partition. Last time it was refreshed was the 24th of, uh, of June. Uh, and this is the storage location. Since a uh, data flow is actually saved as a CSV file on a blob storage, this is the storage location where, you, uh, where it is located. Interesting enough, you cannot directly navigate to this blob storage location uh, unless you configure to have your own data lake behind data flows as storage. A little bit off topic, but I just want to show you this because this is the JSON um, that we are exporting and importing again in an automated way. And this JSON document is what I just exported here with a, a click of a button, export JSON. But let's see that, that I go to another uh, workspace here. So let's go to my acceptance workspace. Uh, I can go here and say, click new, give me a data flow. And I can just say import model. And by doing that, I can point towards the one we just exported, which was this one. Import it again. And in a second, we will see that it's importing this JSON as a new data flow. It succeeded, it removed the credentials as it should do because it's similar to every other uh, data set that you publish. It removes the credentials automatically. Um, 
it doesn't really matter did I configure if I configure it now or not, but as you can see, uh, the data flow is created. Having that said, this, these manual steps can be automated, of course. Uh, Power BI has a REST API. Um, let me show you it quickly. And in this documentation, you will find more about data flows. And the one we are using now is um, this one. Uh, to automate it, we just do a get to the, uh, a certain workspace and we do get the data flow definition. This data flow definition returns us the JSON document. Um, as you see, export specified definition of a J to a JSON file. Um, and the interesting thing is we do not have an upload version here or an import version for data flows. But here's the interesting thing. Uh, if we look at the import uh, APIs and we have a look at the import data set, uh, let me see, post import. The import data set is also applicable for a JSON document for a data flow. So with this one, you can push data flow JSON documents as you can see, mobile.json, um, you can push the data flow documents to the Power BI service to a specific workspace. Uh, so this allows you to automatically push uh, uh, or get the JSON document from workspace A and push it to workspace B. Um, this is all possible with, with just uh, minor automation. Uh, and again, you don't have to do all this yourself. I already wrote this down on my blog post, uh, including a link to GitHub where you can find the script uh, to automate this end to end. Um, I de definitely recommend you to have a look at this if you want to start using Azure DevOps because this part of data flows can be uh, automated and can be uh, uh, customized in your Azure DevOps approach. Where the previous demo I showed you will only use the, um, the PBIX file and execute its retest, which was creating the workspace, uploading the, the PBIX file and updating parameters. You can include a four task pretty easily by executing the PowerShell script that I, as I share on my blog post here. How does this entire story related to Azure DevOps relate to Power BI deployment pipelines? First, let's have a quick look at what deployment pipelines are. Um, as of, I believe, uh, a few months ago or so, something like that, uh, Microsoft released a functionality that's called deployment pipelines. Uh, deploy deployment pipelines are actually uh, a native integration in Power BI, uh, but it is premium only. I will probably tell that a few times more. On the left side here in the menu, we see deployment pipelines, and I set up a demo here. Uh, and this allows you to move content from workspace to workspace, a similar approach as I just demoed in Azure DevOps. Here I uh, configured a, a, a workspace for development and I can move content to production uh, or to test and then to production. Um, if I uh, uh, expand this little menu, I can see what content is in here. Uh, in the, at this moment, they are in line, so there are no uh, no differences between those workspaces. But for example, let's do a minor change in one of these reports. I'm just opening the report now, uh, and let's just move uh, a visual uh, uh, a few pixels. Something really simple. Just locate it there, then do save. Something easy like this. We just moved the visual a little bit. And let's refresh the pipeline. Here you see that they're not in sync anymore. So if I just click now the compare button, you'll see that, hey, we found a difference between the uh, report on the left side in development stage and the report on the right side in the test stage. Um, the interesting thing here is that I can do an incremental deployment. I can say, I oh, know I only want to deploy this report itself. I can say deploy this one to test. Yes, I want to replace this one item. And only the report is now deployed, so not the entire set of content. Another interesting thing uh, is that this is actually using a metadata deployment. The big difference with Azure DevOps approach is that Azure DevOps just publishes the PBIX file. The PBIX file can include your uh, uh, data set as well. 
uh, but it simply does a, a, a overwrite. Um, so it's not comparing any of the metadata. Well, this approach with uh, deployment pipelines is doing a metadata deployment. So once I publish the content to a new workspace, it will not include anything until I hit a refresh button of the workspace uh, or the data set. So it is literally only the model that is put there and only the, um, uh, the schema of the data model that's put there, including the report. Now they're in sync again. Um, I cannot demo you the production one because I told you it's premium only. For development and test environment, you're uh, allowed to use HQs as your uh, uh, Power BI SKUs. For production, you, uh, you're forced to use a PSQ, which is the expensive version of Power BI Premium uh, that has a uh, uh, yearly commitment uh, to be taken before you can enable it. Uh, the approach is similar. You can just move it from environment to environment. Um, another thing that I want to show you is this little Tinder icon, which is known as deployment settings. If we look at the deployment settings, I see that uh, I have one data set in here and I can add rules to this data set. Imagine that I have parameters in this uh, deployment. I can just uh, define the, uh, for example, here I see the file path. Uh, and I can change this to, for example, another uh, uh, another file path. So I can easily change this location of these files um, to capture data from SharePoint, for example, instead of a local file on a, on a OneDrive location. All this can be automatically changed during the deployment. So that's similar to what we do with Azure DevOps. Um, now I didn't save it, but once you deploy it, it will automatically change these values on the back. That can be with the source, that can be with a, a parameter value. Uh, every variable you can define in your data that can be replaced automatically. Um, so the approach is very similar, but let's have a look what actually the comparison and you know, what is lacking, what is, uh, uh, where is it better than, uh, um, than the uh, Azure DevOps approach. So how it works is doing a metadata deployment. It's also doing incremental deployment. So it's only deploying what's new, not overriding the entire metadata, only the differences. This is a huge win for uh, deployment pipelines because this is um, uh, yeah, much more efficient and doesn't require you to do a full refresh of your data set after you uh, deployed it. The less positive side is that it requires Power BI Premium. My assumption here is that it's actually using XML endpoints on the back. So it does a metadata uh, export and import. Um, data flows are not supported yet in this version. Um, if you have a look at the public roadmap of Microsoft, it is on the roadmap for, uh, I believe, March next year, uh, if I remember it by heart, to support data flows for deployment pipelines as well. Um, and at this moment, there is no versioning. Um, and no versioning means there is no easy way to do a rollback to a previous version if you messed up for whatever reason. Um, here's another example. It doesn't only work with one report and data set, uh, as I just showed you, it can also be multiple data sets, multiple reports that you can move in one go. Um, and here you see another example of the, the configuration uh, of your deployment settings. Um, if I want to compare the two together, so deployment pipelines versus the Azure DevOps approach, for both scenarios, it is very easy to work with multiple people because also the Power BI deployments pipelines can be assigned to multiple users. Um, Deployment pipelines is doing a metadata and incremental deployment by default, which is only uh, publishing the differences and not overriding your data set, where Azure DevOps does more or less an override of the complete PBIX file. Um, deployment pipelines uh, are premium only, so you do need part of a premium to work with this, um, where Azure DevOps works for both Power BI Pro and Power BI Premium. There is no dependency for Premium. Azure uh, DevOps has the uh, complete versioning uh, capability of uh, the repositories, 
where deployment pipelines doesn't have anything like that at this moment. Uh, and both of them are not supporting data flows now, but since Azure DevOps is so easy to customize, um, you can customize the entire process to also incorporate that PowerShell script as I just showed you um, to uh, uh, also move your data flows from workspace to workspace. Um, so how does this all to come together? Uh, for the user uh, approach, there's no better option if you ask me. And uh, they both work with multiple users, so th there's no, uh, no winner in there. Uh, incremental deployments and metadata deployment, I believe that uh, there, the advantage is there for deployment pipelines. So my uh, preference would be deployment pipelines in that case. Uh, since it requires premium for deployment pipelines, I would opt for Azure DevOps there, uh, as well as for versioning and the, uh, and the ability to do uh, uh, to customize your process for data flows, um, which is not possible with uh, 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 deployment pipelines. Um, also, integration with other processes is a win. I didn't, didn't tell that yet. Tell that yet. Um, integration with other processes, such as trigger the pipeline to run after something else happened, is possible with Azure DevOps uh, to define the triggers to run the pipeline, where there are no uh, automated triggers for deployment pipelines at this moment. Um, so again, there the win is for Azure DevOps. Though I advise you to have a close look at where uh, uh, deployment pipelines are going, simply because there's a, a lot of time invested in this approach by Microsoft, uh, and there is a huge value and huge, huge potential in this native integration without the need for Azure DevOps. Azure DevOps is something we might know from working with code-based uh, development, um, uh, and we are probably used to it, but definitely not every user in our organization is. Um, so deployment pipelines as a native part of Power BI of the Power BI ecosystem um, would be much better and much easier to understand for your end user how this approach works and how it uh, how they can use it in our day-to-day -day work. Um, as said, I advise you to have a close look at where deployment pipelines is going. Uh, it is very promising. Um, but depending on your actual case and where your requirements are, uh, you might want to decide to work for with Azure DevOps at this moment, but maybe move to uh, deployment pipelines in the future. Um, all this, what I just told you, is also captured together in one of my most recent blog posts of last week, why you should care about Power BI deployment pipelines. Here I also describe what is the win for deployment pipelines uh, uh, versus Azure DevOps. Why, what you should consider uh, and why you should have a, a close look at deployment pipelines and why it is so promising. Um, with that, I want to do a short recap. Um, with this whole approach with Azure DevOps, you can have versioning and hit, uh, version history automatically done by uploading your files to an Azure repository. Um, with that, it is easier for you uh, if you roll back, uh, you need to do a rollback in whatever scenario because you messed up or something else happened. Uh, it is easier to do a rollback from a previous version um, to Power BI automatically. Uh, it really helps you to professionalize your deployment process and work together as a team on the same artifacts because everybody can upload content um, to the same uh, repository. Um, the rollback is there a huge win since uh, this is just yeah, a native thing that you can do to, to create a, or a roll, back, a roll out a different artifact. Um, you can also roll out with Azure DevOps more than only Power BI content. You can fully integrate it in other processes. Um, um, for example, trigger it based on your uh, pipelines for the data platform or whatever. And finally, deployment pipelines is very, very promising, uh, but I believe it's not complete yet, though it is fully depending on the requirements you have if deployment pipelines is the best option for you or Azure DevOps. So I recommend you to read my blog post uh, uh, and consider what is the best option for you. XMLA read and write is something that's premium only, um, but will do the metadata deployment as well. Um, um, so, I think that is also very promising and awesome to work with, but also more technical approach, so maybe not the best option for all users. Um, 
With that, I want to thank you for your attention. Um, please do not forget to give the uh, event feedback and also me as a speaker. This helps me to improve and the organizers to uh, optimize the event for uh, another time. Um, if there are any questions, please feel free to, to ask them now. Uh, I don't see anything in the chat. Mark, looks like there are no queries. Okay. Um, okay. In that case, uh, thanks for your attention, and uh, I want to uh, finish my presentation with this.